Okay, uh, we're going to be working uh, again with HTML5 Canvas. We're going to be loading some images. Uh, if you haven't already, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation up on the screen uh, that will bring you to the playlist. If you haven't watched the entire playlist, I recommend it, but at least watch the last few on loading images. Now, on our first tutorial on loading images to the HTML5 Canvas, uh, we did load multiple images, but we kind of did it by just doing the same thing over and over again. Today we're going to work on creating a function uh, that will load and draw the images for us. Um, and if you're going to be using multiple images, it's definitely a way to go. It will shorten up your code and organize a little bit better because you'll have things in lists. So uh, to get started, uh, I've got uh, Chrome open up here. As you can see, our, our page doesn't load anything just yet. Here's our code down here, just to quickly review. We do have some CSS here that we added in for our Canvas uh, image tutorials uh, that uh, re just remove the margin and the padding of the body. That just removes any white border that, that's around our Canvas. Um, you would, uh, you know, change this to fit your project. Then we've got our Canvas element which we've called My Canvas with a capital C, but you can call that whatever you like within reason. And uh, then we have our scripts here. Uh, and our script, we're going to create a variable, which is going to be our canvas. And that's going to be our canvas element. We're getting it by its ID. So again, My Canvas. Uh, just make sure these correspond and they are, they are case sensitive in correlation with each other. So uh, you don't have to have the capital C there, but if you have the capital C here, then you have to have the capital C there or whatever letters you're going to capitalize. Then we're going to take that canvas object that we just created. We're going to set it to 2D and we're going to set that into a variable called context. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, first thing we're going to do is uh, right now I'm going to have two images. These first two images, this one that we've been working with of my daughter, which is inside the same directory as our script, and then this one of Tux dressed as Mario. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to create an array with those uh, with those URLs to the images as well as giving them names identifiers that we can select them from. So source equals and the first one's my daughter Ember, we'll just call it Ember and then colon and then a comma means there's going to be another one after that. Once again, this is the one that's going to be inside the same directory, so we can just give it a local reference of Ember. Uh, actually, I think it's JPEG. And the next one is the image of Tux. And here, we're going to grab the URL for this, which is out on the internet. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Now, someone's going to ask at this point, how did I copy and paste that? Um, what I did, and this is just a little side note, doesn't really have to do with this tutorial, but I do get asked that sometimes. And most of you probably know this, but I'm surprised how often people don't know this. But uh, I believe most Unix and Unix-like systems, uh, Linux included, uh, uh, has two clipboards. You have your clipboard for when you do edit copy or control C to copy something. But also, once you have something highlighted, it's automatically put into a clipboard. And you can paste that by center clicking anywhere else. And the center click is um, basically if you have a scroll wheel, you just click that down. You don't scroll it, you just push the, the wheel down and it will paste. And that, that's definitely handful, handy inside the, uh, the terminal. It's also just quicker than doing anything else because anything else you'd have to highlight it anyway. And so once it's highlighted, it's already copied. So that's a little side note for you. Okay, at this point we're going to start creating our function. Oops. I'm going to say function. We're going to give it the name of load images. And I also do want to give credit to the website HTML5 Canvas Tutorials. That's where I've learned pretty much all my Canvas stuff from. And my tutorials are going to be similar to theirs. Uh, so just wanted to give them credit. Uh, so we're calling it load images, but we can call it you know whatever we want. We can name the function whatever we want. And then we're going to pass it some information and set a call back here. And uh, then we're going to set some local variables within here. We'll say one is images. This is going to be an array, and we're just going to leave it empty. So we're doing uh, a curly braces there. Uh, then we're going to set var load did images equals zero, and var 
num images equals zero. And I am looking at notes because I don't I'm new to the Canvas stuff, so I'm using notes. <laughs> so if it seems like I'm reading something, that's because I am. Um, so basically, at this point, what we're doing is we're we're creating variables and setting them zero because we're going to use these to count the images in just a little bit, and we're going to start counting at zero because um, at this point we don't have any loaded. Next, we're going to do a for loop. We're going to say for var. We're going to create a variable called s uh, src source inside our sources. What is our sources? And I'll go over all this again at the end. But that's passed in here. Ah, and I just realized I put source there. A little typo. Would have caught that later on. And actually, just be consistent. They could all be source or all sources. It makes more sense since there's more in them to be, for it to be sources. So we're going, when we call this function, which we'll do after we create it, we're going to pass it this list of images. And that's what's going in there. And that's what we're looking at here. We're going to look at each one of those and get it's a set uh, its source uh, from the variable there. I'm not sure if that made complete sense, but again, I'll explain everything better and we'll go through some stuff here at the end. Um, so at this point, we're going to um, start counting our num images. And we're going to go plus plus. So basically, when we call this function, we're going to loop through each image and we're going to get the number of images. So this will get us the number two because we're starting at zero and for each image we're going to add one. That's what the plus plus there means. We're adding one. So this is getting us a total count of the number of images that we've passed this function because we can change the number of images within this list here and that will uh, then allow the function here to know how many images there are. Um, okay, now we're going to create another for loop and again we're going to do src in sources. And what src is going to represent here is the name that we've given our image. So first one will be ember, the second one will be tux, so forth and so on. That's what source represents uh, as our src uh, as we loop through here. Um, so now we're going to say images, which is our empty array that we created up here. And we're going to say we want to give it uh, the value of the name of the image. Uh, and we're going to say that we're going to create a new uh, image. And then we're going to say images again, src dot on load. And then we're going to say equals and we're going to run a function. So now if you remember from our previous tutorial, tutorials on this, um, we have to create an image to draw onto our canvas. That's what we're doing here. And then when it's loaded, we're going to run a function and we're going to uh, do a context draw, draw image to our context, which is our canvas. And the way it's knowing which image it's basically giving each image its own name based on its label down here. So I give it a little identifier there. And then when that's loaded, we're going to uh, count the number of images, see if it's greater than or equal than the number of images. And then we are going to um, uh, go ahead and get its source and draw it. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'll try to explain all this again at the end a little bit better. I'll say if, and then inside here we're going to say plus plus loaded images, which at this point is zero. Uh, and we're going to say greater than equal to uh, num images, which at this point would be two because we have added uh, to it for each loop starting at zero for each image we've looped through and added to it. Okay, and then we're, this is when we're going to call our callback images. And then outside our if statement here, and actually outside that function, we're going to call images src 
dot source. This is where we're setting its source. And how we know what the source is, we're going to say sources dot, or sorry, so sources src inside the brackets there. And that will grab the source from our array down here. OK, that is our function. Hopefully, I typed everything right. We'll know if we get any problems. We'll check our console for errors. But we'll say now we're going to call our function load images. So that's what we called it up here. Again, you can call it something else. But when you then when you call it, you have to um, call the same name that you gave it. And we're going to pass it sources, which in this case is our list of images here. And then we're going to say function images. And then inside here is where we're going to do our drawing. We're going to say context dot draw image. What image are we going to draw? It's going to be the images that are passed and then the name. So images dot, in this case, we'll say ember. And we'll give it a position of 0, 0, so it'll be in the top left corner. And then we're going to say context. Let's just bring that down a little bit so we can see better. Dot uh, draw image. And again, we're going to say images, but this time dot tux, comma, 0 comma zero. So if we save that, and if I typed everything right, and we come back to our HTML here and I hit F5, we get nothing. That means I typed something wrong. Either I put a comma or a semicolon in the wrong place, I forgot a bracket, or I just mis misspelled something like before I was doing source instead of sources, and so they weren't correlating. How do we find out what is wrong? Well, the first place we should start is if you're in Chrome, just hit F12, and it will bring up your console, like so. If you're in Firefox, it does have some built-in con uh, console, but uh, the uh, Firebug console is a plug-in that's also very handy. Um, but here it's saying it's caught two errors. Uh, see right there, it says uh, inum images. I, I put an I at the beginning there by accident. That was a typo on my behalf. It says it's on line 28. If we click over here, it actually brings you right to that line. Uh, but come back here into my editor and I can go to line 28 right there save that refresh there we go good thing I only made one little typo there and of course the order it draws the images does make a difference because what's drawn second will be placed on top of the first thing that's drawn so if we have three images the first image drawn will be back then the second image will be drawn on top of the first and then the third will be drawn on top of the uh, second so now that we've done that, let's, uh, let's add in a third image. So I've already done a Google search, found this one of Tux's Ramble, Rambo. I'm going to copy its uh, URL here just by highlighting it. And I'm going to just add it to this list. I'll call it Rambo, colon, and then paste it in there. Now, because we had another one, we need to add a comma. So each item needs comma in between each item needs commas in between them so basically all except for the last one will have a comma after it and then down here I'm just going to quickly to save time paste so we're gonna say context draw image images which image are we going to draw I'm going to draw the Rambo one based on its name right there if I save that and then remember that I need to put a comma there then save it again Come back here, I'll hit F5 to refresh. Oh, sorry, go to our page and hit F5 to refresh. It drew that, and again, it, since it was drawn last, it's drawn top of the other tux. You can kind of see the other tux a little bit behind him. Let's give him another position. We'll move him 400 and 200, save that, and we'll refresh. And you can see he's been moved over 400 pixels and down 200. Uh, we can also move this tux. Uh, we'll move him over 100 and down 200, so he'll be on the same uh, plane as that guy, so it looks like they're standing next to each other. Uh, so let's quickly review all this code. So again, we have our canvas. We create our canvas element inside our, um, our script here. Now we have our function, 
and we have our source list and then our load images when we're calling the function. So let's start here. Again, we have a list of our images. And what are we going to do with that list? Well, we're going to call our function, which is up here, but we're calling it here. We're putting in this list. It's going to run that function and then retrieve uh, some output with images there. So let's go see what it's doing up here. We're saying, oh, we're going to pass it that source list. It's called sources. Again, an empty array, two variables set as zero to count stuff. Now that we have num images set to zero, for each image, we're going to loop and add one. So in this case, there's three images. We're going from zero, one, two, three. So we know there are three images. Then we're going to loop through each image again at this point, And we're going to say uh, images, which image we're going to pass it. Well, this one's Ember, and then Tux, and then Rambo. And we're going to create a new image based on that. So basically, each image will have its own name. One will be images Ember, images Tux, images Rambo. Then we're going to say, well, uh, we're going to load that image and run this function. And it's going to check was the uh, uh, loaded images, the number of images loaded, equal to or greater than uh, the num images. If it is equal to or greater than, then we're going to do our callback, uh, passing in the images. Uh, and then um, what we're going to do outside of that is, um, so if that's, ba that's basically saying at this point, we're done go back to down here and draw the image. Now, before it's done, if we haven't loaded all the images, we have to say, OK, oh, that image that we just put in, let's give it a source. So sources is going to be um, basically look at each image and look at its URL here. So it's going to loop three times. And then on the fourth loop, it should uh, say, oh, we have now loaded all the images. Let's do the callback come back down here, pass it images. So now those images, which image? And it will just draw each one. And again, here we're just giving it positions. Now, of course, I always recommend typing out code by hand when you're learning, really all the time, because it's always just gets you better at what you're doing. Uh, but I will post this in my Pastebin account. Uh, if you go to pastebin.com, um, and my username is uh, metalx1000, um, you will be able to find this. You could also go to filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There's a link in the description. That's my site. There should be a link somewhere that says scripts. Right now it's at the, in the top toolbar, uh, but my site might change in the future. And that will bring you straight to here when you click on that. And you can see all the scripts that I've uploaded. Uh, and we have a list of all the HTML ones here that we've gone through already. And of course, this one will be there. It will be named like multiple images, HTML5 or something like that. Um, and you can always copy and paste it to test it, but I recommend to actually uh, type it out when you're learning. But uh, this image of my daughter is not going to be in that script it, it's, since it's an image on my local machine. So just so I don't confuse you guys, I'm going to remove it from the list. But this code, just as it is, will go up on the page. So if I run it again now that I've removed those two lines uh, for that image and hit F5, you can see it still runs. It just doesn't place that image because it no longer exists. So if you're just you know doing a, a thing with one or two images, writing out this function might be uh, a little more typing, but it definitely keeps things more organized. And really, once you have more than three photos, this is going to start shortening your code. You can have like 100 photos in here. And all you have to do is add them to the list and then add them to your little uh, draw function here. So uh, that's it. I hope you're enjoying these tutorials. Uh, now that we've done some loading images, we have a few more tutorials on, uh, on the basics of HTML5 Canvas. Then we'll move on to advanced stuff. And then we'll start moving into uh, other um, tools uh, for 2D stuff and then eventually 3D stuff. And hopefully by the time I get to those tutorials, I'm a little more knowledgeable on the 3D stuff because I've played around with it a little bit and I'm so happy with what I've learned so far and I think we're going to do a lot of fun things and again because we're doing it uh, in HTML5 and pretty much uh, all modern operating systems can run HTML5 and most modern browsers are at least catching up because uh, it's not the standard yet but it will be HTML5 not that everyone follows the standard but we'll learn how to create things that uh, will run on pretty much any device 
phone, tablet, um, Android, iPhone, Windows uh, 8, mobile, uh, Linux, uh, FreeBSD, any modern operating system will be able to run what we are creating, at least in theory. So um, I hope you're enjoying these tutorials. I'm enjoying making them. I'm enjoying learning. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.